Welcome to the Spectrum Lounge podcast, where we discuss creators of color disrupting the game in TV, film, and pop culture. I am your host, Rebecca Theodore Vachon, and on this episode, we chat with actor Niambi Niambi, who plays investigator Jade DePersia on the CBS all access hit drama, The Good Fight. Take a listen. You know, I actually am a huge fan of The Good Wife. And um, I had watched, I started watching The Good Fight, but then I didn't have CBS All Access. So now with this quarantine, I had so many shows that I had to catch up on and mm-hmm. that show was on my list. So I actually, um, I watched it through my Amazon Prime account. Um, and I th- I believe I, I think I um, binged watched it in like over a weekend. I started like on a th- Friday and, mm-hmm. and ended on Sunday. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's thank like, you. It's thank such, you. It's such a great show. So you play Jay to Persia. Is that correct? That's yeah, right. Jay to Persia. Yeah, yeah, Jay to Persia. Uh, yeah. So you are the uh, one of the investigators. Yes. Um, Phoretic Bozeman. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your character and how you came to the role? Uh, yeah, so I play Jay DePersia, who's the uh, in-house investigator, who who was the lead investigator uh, for Reddick Bozeman Kolstad uh, before it became Reddick Bozeman Lockhart. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, uh, brought on a protege, per se, who's now become my uh, my uh, my partner when it comes to investigating, and that's uh, Marissa Gold, played by the, uh, mm-hmm. the awesome and great Sarah Steele. Um, the way I came to the role... Um, it was really quick. Um, everything happened so quickly. There was it was a Tuesday. I remember getting the um, the uh, the script and the audition, and they were like, "Can you put yourself on tape for this audition?" I said, "Okay, mm-hmm. what you need it." End of the week, next week, they were like, "We need it tonight," and I was like, "Whoa, okay, tonight, <laughs> all right." Um, I got to figure out who this guy is. I got to figure out, you know all of the um, you know, the things uh, an actor needs to figure out to be able to do an audition, you know, that fast. And so um, did the audition, put it on tape, sent it out that night. The next morning um, got the, uh, the call that, um, that CBS really loved me. The Kings loved me. Everyone loved me. And uh, they're going to fly me out that day from Los Angeles to New York and Mm -hmm. flew me out that day. And I started filming the next morning, like my 6 My goodness. Yeah. Are you serious? That is like serious. the quickest turnaround. <laughs> quick. That's quick. amazing. It, it was quick. quick. <laughs> yeah. And so, what's crazy, uh-huh. I, shot, I shot once, I shot, um, I, I want to say one, maybe two scenes. Uh, mm-hmm. And then they flew me right back to LA. So I was like, wow. Well, oh, yeah, it was quick. It was quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's such an amazing cast. Christine Baranski, Kush Jimbo, Delroy Lindo, and Audrey McDonald. I mean, what is yeah. it like working with such a stellar cast? I mean, it's it's an amazing cast to work with. Like you said, Christine Baranski, Audrey McDonald, Delroy Lindo, Kush Jumbo, as well as Michael Boatman, Sarah Steele, who I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had great people come through, like Rose Leslie, uh, who, who was amazing, um, uh, you know, for our, for our first three seasons. Erica Tazel, season one, uh, Justin Bartha for the first two seasons. Um, we now have Zach Reiner, who's a part of our, our show, um, who's great. Uh, John LaRoquette, uh, who's amazing. I mean, just a, a lot of great um, uh, actors have come through. And, of course, the, the great uh, and brilliant guest stars that we have come through as well. Um, yeah. My number one, of course, was Lou Gossett Jr. Uh, you know, that, that that was royalty to me. Uh, yes. So to be able to be in the same scene with him was great. Right. And that storyline, I did not see that coming. Nah, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know we were introduced to his character in season two. Um, so he's sort of like the civil rights icon, like this lion mm-hmm. um, of yeah. activism. And then in season two, we find out that uh, all that glitters is not gold. Um, mm-hmm. And that his character, uh, we understand that he had sexually assaulted and sexually harassed um, some of the female, some of the former female employees um, at Reddick Bozeman. Uh, what was your reaction when you when you saw that storyline or you heard about I it? I mean, I was shocked. But at the same time, you know, um, our show is very uh, close to the pulse of what's happening now. And mm-hmm. um you know, at, at the time when we, we shot that and we and and it aired, remember um, the the Me Too movement was really at the height 
of, uh, of the zeitgeist and everyone's conversation. And so it was our way of, of, of uh, dealing with that and, and uh, having, having a conversation about that through that. And, mm. um, you know, you saw brilliant work from Marjorie McDonald. Uh, um, yes. Um, you know, having to deal with, um, you know, a father who um, everyone looked up to and including herself and how, do, how does, how does she, how does the firm, you know, move on, you know, uh, from that. Um, right. And uh, yeah, I mean, we, we do a really, a really, um, uh, I, I mean, I think we do an amazing job of exploring uh, the, uh, the national conversation, the global conversation in, in, in some respects um, mm. in a way that no other television show does. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think what was um, so great about that episode is um, just kind of seeing what's happening in real time with like R. Kelly and Bill Cosby yeah. um, and some of our, you know, black icons. And what was interesting about that episode was seeing the spectrum of um, reactions because we had, you know, the secretary that had sex that he sexually assaulted um, and she decided to keep quiet. And then there was another secretary throughout the investigation. We find out there was another secretary and there was this really interesting conversation where the secretary said, I'm not going to say anything like, you know, we need to yeah. keep his legacy intact. And so I would never bring down a black man. And I, I, I couldn't help but think about the conversations we've seen about our real life, um, you know, black activists and icons where it's, it's yeah. sort of the image where we have to preserve that. So it's, yeah, it's, that was such a it's fast. It's a, it's, it's fascinating, man. you know, cause in terms of, uh, you know, you look at someone um, like, like Bill Cosby uh, for many people, for many comedians, for many, you know, actors from uh, he was a huge influence on them in terms of their decision to become, uh, comedian or their uh, the decision to be, uh, you know, an entertainer and mm-hmm. um, uh, his characters, the people that he, he put, portrayed and the image that he, um, he uh, portrayed uh, was such a huge influence on um, many of us uh, black folks, you know, and, um, and then it becomes that interesting thing of like, well, I mean, do I ignore the sort of the, the positive things that I got from, you know, that image? Um, or, you know, like, how do I like, how do you navigate that now that you have all the information? Uh, mm-hmm. Because um, who you are and where you are um, uh, began with an influence like that, you know? And so it's, it's, it's a question of um, how to, you know, I think compartmentalizing um, who this person was and and um, and how you 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 uh, deal with the narrative of who he is as a whole person. Right. So yeah. I I wanted to ask you. I mean, being a, a male actor um, with the Me Too movement, like how yeah. have you felt as far as being on set, working with yeah. women coworkers? Like, what has what? How are Michelle and Robert King, like how are the producers and the executive producers and you personally um, contributing to making sure that we have, that you have a safe work environment on the good fight? Well, I mean, look, it's like, to me, I think it's, it, it, it's, it's just, you, you, it's basics, you know, in terms of how you treat, you, you treat people, uh, you know, let alone women, but just, in, and it, it's just respect. And just um, being completely respectful of, of people's space, of where where they come from, who they are, and uh, and not assuming, you, you know, and and um, uh, I mean, you you just have to approach every relationship with respect, and that's just how that's who I am, that's how I am, and that's how I've always been. And so, um, as far as the adjustment, I um, I didn't feel like there was one for me. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, what you hear from folks is that they're like, well, I'm not going to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, hug someone or say hi to someone or this, whatever. The, you know, there is a way to do those things where um, you you ask permission. There's a, there's a, there is a, 
a, hum, a humane way of connecting with people. And I think, um, um, I, I think the, the thing, the number one thing that people do not do that I think mm -hmm. is super important when it comes to interacting with folks is listen. And uh, when you listen, you'll know how to uh, approach a relationship, you know, how to, how that relationship begins and continues. If you listen, if you spend your time listening, then the, the, the relationship is easy. Um, and uh, I think a lot of times people don't listen and, and, and that's where you find yourself, you get yourself in trouble. So um, I think, um, I think, you know, we have a wonderful environment in terms of what's been established on, on the, uh, on set, uh, because, um, on set, we have amazing women on set. Uh, it's also, uh, a good wife who was around for eight years mm -hmm. prior to the good fight. And so it's the same crew, uh, same producers, uh, you know, of course the same writers. And so, um, and, you know, with some, with turnover in the writer's room, uh, to adjust to the, the storylines that we're, t we're telling now. Um, but it's a well-oiled machine in terms of how uh, people respect one another. Right. Um, I, I did want to talk about your character because um, well, some of the ob observations I was, you know, talking to a friend of mine who's a huge fan of the show as well. And shout um, out to the huge fan. Yes. <laughs> um, so I was like, you know, I really love the Jade to Persia character. So we were kind of, I was kind of giving her a recap of season one, and I was like, I like it, but I was like you know, I wish that they would like, just let Jay do his job. <laughs> like I want to see Not him here. like in the field. And so it was, it was such a pleasant to, surprise to see like in season two and three that they gave you so much more to do, not only on the professional side, um, but also on the, on the personal side. Uh, one of my favorite episodes was, um, I think it was day 785. That was where Jay um, is taken in by ice. Yeah, and he yeah. has this whole immigration problem. So, was did that idea come from you, from the writers, and how much input did you have? Um, you know, with that? when it comes to some of these storylines and and some of the uh, you know the the backstory, um, I mean that was uh, you know the ICE uh, situation was a, it was was and continues to still be very much a part of our national conversation in mm -hmm. terms of how we deal with immigration. Uh, right. But then also um, conversations that I know that they had with Kush Jumbo, uh, who's also who's you know a Nigerian Brit, mm -hmm. and then uh, of course conversation they had with me, who's a Nigerian American. Um, uh, you know, you sort of throw stories out there and 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 then forget about it, and then um, you get a script and you're like, wait a second, this feels so close. Where have I heard this before? Oh, this is a story that, uh, you know, one of the cast members had, had shared, or this is something that I just casually tossed away, and then and and now it's in the script. So that's kind of how um, you know some of things, some of these things uh, come about. Um, sort sort of a marriage uh, between some of the stories we would tell uh, in conversation, but but then um, what's actually happening in um, in the uh, in our, our current social situation. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of dope to see that, to see, you know, our, you know, the things that we, we've seen and what we've gone through, gone through, be explored um, through, through uh, our, our art form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I really like too, about your character is how he's really stepped up to sort of be like this moral compass for the firm and for the characters on the show. And so my favorite scenes are when you actually, when your character actually goes toe to toe with Adrian Bozeman, cause you know, yeah, that's definitely Lindo. Yeah, um, <laughs> so can yeah, you tell man. us a little bit about, about working with him and have those kind of intense scenes, those, those confrontational scenes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So Del Delroy's great, man. He, he really, um, you know, we've, we've, we've come to, to have a great relationship. Um, and of course on screen and, and off screen, and you know, I guess, I mean, I'm I'm just that 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 dude that like that that likes to break the ice in, in mm -hmm. some way, you know. And Delroy's very, you know, very serious cat. Um, but first, first thing I did was I made fun of him, just because you know, <laughs> that's the first thing I did. You know, I'll right. tell him things like because I knew he originated the role of Harold Loomis uh, on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and Joe Turner's come and gone, and um, 
and uh like i i was like um i was like hey yo man i heard uh you know i saw this production uh of of uh, Joe Turner's coming, coming, gone. That I heard was the greatest before, like production ever at PS one fifty one. Like I named some like high school, and um, <laughs> he burst out laughing. Um, you know, I just say silly things like that. You know, um, yeah. and um, but then, it, it, but he knew that it was all coming from respect because, mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be like hands down, man. Uh, like West Indian Archie and Malcolm X was my, my jam. Like you, you yes. watched it, right? <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. like, um, you know, having conversations about, you know, that, and then just talking about uh, him coming, you know, coming up when, you know, in the, in the theater, you know, right. uh, you know, working with August Wilson, um, you know, working on, uh, on uh, Fugard plays back then, you know, working with, um, with uh, James Earl Jones and all that. So hearing all the stories, um it's great you know it, it just it, it it feels it does feel like a father-son relationship when it comes to um what's happening um you know off screen yes but what what you see on screen yes um yes. so so yes. when you see us go toe-to-toe you know you feel like it's family going toe-to-toe right i, I yeah. one of the um one of the confrontations they had uh, was the whole discussion about how Reddick Bozeman had been hiring more white lawyers yeah. and more white associates. And so there's, you know, the scene where he's talking um, to Adrian about that. And also when he's in the car um, with Kush Jimbo's character and she's sort of like, he's sort of like, yeah, you know, the associates, they, they like you, but they're, you're kind of distant, you know? So there's this conversation of, of blackness, right. Or how they kind of see Mm -hmm. her kind of side. And then, you know, you, your character also, you know, bringing light to Adrian that there is a bias. There's a bias as far as gender and the fact that a lot of the white associates and the white lawyers don't come to Jay uh, when they need um, investigative work, they turn towards Melissa. So this, this whole thing of race versus gender where, you know, um, age, you know, your character, Jay is a black man, but then Marissa is a white woman, is a white Jewish woman. Yeah. So then, mm-hmm. you know, there's, it, there's no easy answers. And, and I love how the show just complicates things like nothing is ever really black and white. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's no easy answers. And, and you, you, you know, at first and foremost, you know, Adrian, he, he, they're, we're running a business and he's doing, he, he's doing what he, what he can um, to, to make the business run and run well. And mm-hmm. so he's looking at the numbers in 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 that way. And for me, um, I'm looking at it in terms of like the historical um, elements, um, and then actually the, the the decisions that that are being made and and how they're being made, how it's affecting um, not only uh, me, but then how it's affecting uh, the makeup of the firm. Um, it's sort of making up uh, how it's it's um, affecting the original premise of what the firm stood for. And so uh, one of my favorite lines was, uh, I want to say it was season one, I think it was season one, maybe season two, where um, there was a, um, a ricin incident. And yeah, um, yeah and then, I, you know, I question, I find the guy who who who, who did it, you know, who, who sent the, uh, the, the, uh, the fake alert or whatever. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, sort of coax the information, I co- coax a, a, uh, a confession out of him, and then Marissa says that was cold, and I said, "Well, I don't work for him; I work for the firm." I have to tell you that cracked yeah. me up. That scene was probably yeah. one of my favorite. He was like, "I was just doing my job," and so yeah, yeah that was. I mean, and you and you, you agree with Jay, yeah? Because he we clearly see where Joy where Jay's loyalty lies, but we also know that he's not afraid to call you know Adrian and the other partners. No, under, you know, no BS on their shenanigans. Um, yeah. So why can we? from season four with your character what can we expect well uh with this new season this new season we we deal a lot of, well, a lot in 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 uh secrets and lies you know in terms of conspiracy theories and how do they affect the firm how do we navigate through the conspiracies that that are out there the the, the people who want to sort of of uh keep us in check um, it's really an exploration in, in terms of um, you know how do we how do we come back 
because, you know, last season, season three, you know, we ended up losing our biggest, our biggest um, uh, client, which was Chum Hum, you know, right. and which is like, you know, I guess like Google, you know, per se. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we're, 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 we're trying to find a way to survive. And so we get bought up by this, um, we, you know, acquired by this other uh, law firm, a larger law firm. And, um, you know, they've hired us for whatever reason they've hired us, which you'll find out why, uh, yeah. which is also uh, an interesting and funny thing. Uh, not so funny, but, you know, funny to us, black folks. And because, um, <laughs> you know, how you it's just like, mm hmm. And so, yes. um, yeah, yeah. It's one of those mm -hmm moments, you know. Um, <laughs> everybody, every black person knows what that is when you use a, mm -hmm. We know. We know. Well, we you know. know. We know. You know what's, yeah. been, what's been interesting is that um, I think this was a couple of weeks ago. Um, there was a clip of the good fight that went viral. Um, this was yeah. the episode where Adrian was on that. Uh, I think it was a, a news show, sort of like a news panel, yeah. and yeah. and it was that whole debate of the N word where the 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 two white uh, male correspondents were like, "Well, why can't we say the N word?" And then Adrian is just like, "Okay, you say it." You can say it. I'll say it with you. And, and what was interesting that it was that people who were not familiar with the show actually yeah. thought it was for real. Like they actually thought it was yeah. dumb or Lindo. And then what happened? You know, people were explaining that it was actually from the good fight, and it was it was fascinating to see people who had not been familiar with the show. You know, especially now being in lockdown, they were like, "Oh, I need to watch this show just based on that clip." Yeah, um, yeah. So I'd be, I, I'd be interested to see how like how the metrics have changed since that. Since that viral went, uh, that's viral amazing, went. man. It's amazing yeah. because uh, the you know I had a, I had a similar moment a similar moment where um, uh, I mean it didn't it didn't I don't think it went it went vir viral like that, but it still right. went viral enough for me because I was you know the people coming at me uh, for it, but mm -hmm. the whole um, you know episode where we're um, uh, we're dealing with the uh, the alt right uh, group who are suppressing the voters. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. And so I had that monologue straight to um, to a camera and people thought that that was me, you know, the, wow. you know, because it was just that clip that was out there and people thought it was just it was me. And I was like, no, nah, that's Jade the Persia. That's not me. <laughs> like the character on the television it. show. That's how convincing you are. That's how great. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted I did want to talk to you uh, really quickly because I know that you're a self avowed blurred, yeah. shout out blurs. And Thank so, uh, Blurred's funny right. enough, a, a couple of weeks ago I had actually watched uh, Death of Superman and The Reign mm. of the Superman, uh, yeah. the animated movies from DC. And I was you know when I was doing research before interviewing you, and then it was like, oh my god, he voiced Martian Manhunter. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even yeah. know that. <laughs> um, so, I mean, just kind of tell us, like, what I what I did find, what I do find interesting about Ma Martian Manhunter throughout DC animated and also in the live version, um, we've had, I think you're like the seventh or the eighth black actor to voice Martian Manhunter. We also have yeah. a live action version um, on Supergirl played by David Harewood. And I remember I, I had spoken to him a couple of years ago and I was like, you know, asking him, why do you think that is? Why is there this uh, preference or this this idea of having black actors um, either voice or play Martian Manhunter? Um, and I just wanted to to get your your take on on what that means to you. Um, you know, for me, I, I think um, uh, you know, I don't I don't know how deep they went with it in terms of DC, in terms of just casting you know, that character black. Cause he's, he's just someone that's, you can very easily say, you know, he's black because he's a shapeshifter. Um, mm. but, uh, for me personally, what I love about them casting someone black is because, um, uh, you know, Martian Manhunter, John Jones, um, in order to, I, I think his whole thing is about empathizing with humanity, uh, in, in, in many ways. And I think, um, if you really take the time to know and understand the history and, and plight of, of uh, black folks, and I say black folks, African-Americans, Africans, you know, here and abroad, um, mm -hmm. um, I feel like uh, he empathizes with them. And, uh, and then at the same time, um, 
you know, I say them, us. And at the same time, um, in order to be invisible uh, in many ways, uh, you know, I think of Ralph Ellison's uh, Invisible Man, in order to be invisible uh, and sort of walk among uh, man and, and take the time to really know and understand uh, humanity, um, uh, who other than uh, someone Black to sort of navigate that world? Because in many ways we are invisible uh, to uh, the masses. And, um, and so I, you know, I find that very interesting to, you know, to, that, that it's, it, it just layers it to me in, in, in ways that, um, I think the original idea of Martian, Martian Manhunter, um, does not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I know you're a big comic book fan. Um, so what are some of the titles you're, you're reading right now during quarantine? What are, what, what are some things uh, you would suggest during, for people to read? During quarantine, I'm reading, of course, uh, I'm reading, I just finished reading Lock and Key, uh, which is great. Um, I read a book called Bitter Root currently and another book called, uh, Excellence. Um, you know, um, two stories that uh, one's about a black family, the other one about a black kid um, who uh, is dealing in in, in uh, the world of uh, wizard, wizardry, um, uh, both African African Americans, um, uh, African American stories. Um, uh, I'm also going back and reading stuff that I didn't didn't get a chance to read, like Hickman's um, Fantastic Four. Um, you know, I'm just diving, man, deep diving into anything and everything that I can. Um, right. Now I have the time. So, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, so, uh, so for you, as far as like the live action side of, of comic book movies, what character would you want to go for? Or would you, what, would the, which character would you want to play? <sighs> That's a great question. Great question. Um, I, mean, I know friends who've told me that I should look at uh, uh, at Brother Voodoo, but um, you know, in in Marvel. Uh, but um, I would love to, you know, I, I'm, in in a movie, live action movie, I'd love to actually play uh, Martian Manhunter. I just love I love Martian Manhunter so much. Yes, that that's he's he's someone I'd love to play in a in a live action movie. Yeah, uh, I'm. I was I was just talking. I think I was just watching the Justice League movie. A couple of weeks ago, I think they were playing it on TNT, and I was just like, "When are we gonna get a Justice League too? I would really yeah. like to see that. Yeah, because I know they are, they're going in different directions right now. Uh, you know, with the Joker movie and Birds yeah. Prey and everything. But I would love for them to circle back <laughs> for us to get that, and also yeah. another Superman yeah, exactly. movie. I was I actually like Henry Cavill in the first one. Man of Steel. Amazingly enough, my sister did not know that that was a Superman movie when it came out. I was like, you're gonna see the, you're gonna see me on the scene. She was like, what? She was like, what's that? And I'm like, that is a Superman movie. She was like, I didn't know. That. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John Stewart is another one that uh, be great. Um, you know, mm-hmm. um, as far as DC is concerned. Um, trying to think as far as DC Marvel. Uh, I mean, if I were, if I'd love to play, you know, be a part of the X Men in some way. I mean, that'd be amazing. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Oh shoot, I'm being hit up. I'm being hit up because it looks like I have to. <laughs> I have to step away. No okay. problem. Thank you so much for for speaking with no, me. No, thank you. Thank yes, you. of course. Let's do it again. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs>